Welcome back to Mastara, everybody, for the penultimate expert module to be covered, X-13, The Crown of Ancient Glory. I'm Mr. Welch, and today we are talking about the last official expert module ever printed. The Crown of Ancient Glory was printed in 87 by Stephen Bourne, the second module ever set in the nation of Vestland after the Curse of Xanathar. The module, like the other later expert modules, turned away from the exploration focus of the uh, X-series for a more traditional style module. This review might run a bit short, as the module is a mystery requiring you to find the missing crown, the rightful king and figure out the villains, so I can't give too much away. The module was written a year before the Northern Reaches Gazetteer, and it shows as this module resembles nothing like it's the official version of the Vestland. Instead of Vikings and Fjords, Vestland in the module resembles more Arthurian England. The game, the names are more Gaelic, and the plot is almost straight out of La Morte de Arthur. There are obvious allusions to Hugo's Man in the Iron Mask, and Bourne obviously read his classics before designing the module. The basic premise of the module is that King Merimet has died and his body is lost. Lost. The magical crown that gives the module its name is also lost, so Vestlan has no way to determine who is the true king. Merimet's young son Thindal is named king, but does not have the full support of the nobility. Unfortunately, Thindal gets himself killed uh, pretty quickly off screen, leaving the nation without a clear leader. That, of course, starts the module as the party is hired to find the lost crown so the nation can learn who is the rightful king. The Victor Hugo reference becomes obvious when the party discovers almost immediately Merimet had twin sons. He sent one, the second son off to avoid avoid the uh, a crisis over the throne. So to discover the identity of the long lost son, you've got to find the crown. The adventure is largely a wilderness module, but is a bit railroaded by the plot. There is a large dungeon crawl in the middle of the module with a bit of seaborne adventuring at the end. With each clue leading you to the next location, there's not a lot of room for exploration here. The module also has a large page count weighing in at 64 pages, but a dozen of those pages are for pre-generated characters and maps. Adding to this, there's a lot of exposition at the beginning of the module. Two pages Pages devoted to the setup of the story, and the guy giving the party on the quest rambles on for almost a full page. So if you're the DM, you, uh, make sure you have a water bottle, as you're, there's going to be a lot of talking before the party even gets started. Not on par with Ayn Rand levels of verbosity, but you're still running your bone box for several minutes. The module has a large amount of mystery and investigation. I've probably said this almost every module, but the skill system from the rule cyclopedia greatly increases increases the playability of the module. You're going to be searching, interrogating, and researching for a lot of this adventure. There is a conspiracy in work against the parties, and cleaving your way through everybody you encounter isn't going to stop it. The module will tend to bore people looking for hack and slash. It's more of a scavenger hunt than your typical Viking epic, though the ending of the module is pretty much waves of bad guys throwing themselves at you, so if you really want to kill things, you just got to wait through the end of the module. The strength of the module is the writing. It's a well-written plot and a thought-out adventure. Yes, it's inspired by some literary classics, but a good plot is still a good plot no matter the setting. The locations you have to go around to figure out who the bad guys are, as well as find out who the king is, are rather unique, which does give the homage its Arthurian feel. With misty moors, isolated islands filled with berserkers, and a stealth run through an evil noble's castle, while the game's still largely, largely a railroad adventure, at least it's a scenic trip. Unfortunately for the setting in Mastara, the module hasn't aged well, largely because the gazetteer that followed describing Vestland turned the nation into something more akin to Sweden than North York. So to make it fit into the Vestland of the Northern Reaches gazetteers, you've got some work to do. The Ethengar are still presented as the evil yet curiously undescribed barbarians at the gate, not as quasi-Mongolians from their gazetteer but you can usually change or omit them entirely because they're not in the modules, they're just threatened by random passing NPCs. You don't have to change much of the module with the mechanics, uh, save for updating it to the rule cyclopedia, but if you play anywhere near the Northern Reaches, you're going to have to change a lot of the names because Gil Erid and King Tenatar don't have much of a Viking feel. At the very least, set the modules a few years before the Vestlin timeline, or just either have this happen previously or even better, Use this to explain the coronation of the current Vestland King. The best way to keep the module canon without disturbing the timeline is just move it to the Isle of Dawn. Crown of Ancient Glory is filled with the imagery and locations that are taken almost directly from English myth. Adding to this is that parts of the island are settled by several Northmen, so there's still a Viking-like presence in several parts of the island. You just have to change Ethengar to the Alphatians and slightly modify the Big Bad's plans, but it fits perfectly into the setting. Large part of the map mentioned in the module doesn't mess with the Vesland map from other sources anyways, so putting it into the Isle of Dread, sorry, Isle of Dawn rather, just requires you to find a region with some cities that are somewhat the same distance as the cities in the module. Failing that, just invent some small towns around the uh, capital of 
and wing it. West Rourke, Redstone, and Cairdania have a very strong Saxon, Irish, and Welsh influence, uh, respectively. A large portion of the northern half of the Isle of Dawn is filled up with cities with obvious Viking and Norse-sounding names, so you can just shoehorn in the Viking names that you're going to find in the module by just putting it uh, fairly north onto the Isle itself. Now if you don't care about canon or this is just a one-off, don't worry about all this, but if you want to actually have a world-building Mystara game and have this part of your background and your canon, you just got a little bit of work to do, but not too bad. Converting the module to 5th edition is a little bit more difficult because of the nautical part at the end. The module has a rather fierce ship battle where the big bad sends the ships of mooks to stop the party from getting the new king back to the palace. And ship to ship combat is something that Beckme put a lot of focus on, but you'll need to wing it or grab some source books from the DM's guild to help you with the rather large scale battle that caps the module off. The villain is sending everyone he's got, but you have quite a few allies, so the final scrap can reach almost uh, mass combat levels, something, again, that 5th edition is really lacking on. So narrate the mook on mook action, or just scale it down to manageable levels, but you really want to have a blowout of a battle at the end, because this is the king that you're bringing forward, and you've discovered who the evil villain is, and he's got a lot of influence, and he's going to try to stop you. And since the module has been pretty combat light, you really want to send your players out with something they will remember. And longboats crashing into each other with dozens of Vikings storming over the railings to get to the king and you and your ship's crew has to hold them off, if done right, is going to be one of the most memorable fights your players are ever going to have. So you gotta really spruce this one up. Just let go in this battle. You've had a very low-key adventure until now. You've been sneaking around, looking for clues, and solving riddles until now, and suddenly a boatload of bad guys shows up and is trying to keep you from getting to the king from an awesome moment of crowning, so just have at it. Set things on fire, throw berserkers at them, hell, put one of them on fire, then throw them at him. By this time, the module is 95% done, and an epic battle at the end is always more dramatic than just throwing the newly appointed king over to the uh, region and saying, here's the guy you've been looking for, where's our money? So acquiring the module is not cheap. I have seen it go for as little as $40 on auction. Most people want about twice that when they sell it. This is about the same price for the rest of the later expert level modules, so apparently they didn't print as much as they did, say, Isle of Dread or Castle Amber. I would say the size of the module might affect the price, but there's a lot of other later modules in addition to this one that are half the size and still about the same price. There's no extra pieces like there was in Red Arrow Black Shield, so if you're buying the module all you have to do is check it for quality to make sure the pages aren't falling out and there's no marks in it. And you're going to have to buy it second market, it's not available on print on demand yet. If you want to buy the PDF, that's $5 on drive-through RPG, then you can go down and print it out yourself. Though, remember, this has got a large page count, so you're going to be printing for a while. So that wraps up Crown of Ancient Glory. I didn't go into the module that much in detail because it is a mystery, and it's a decent mystery. You're buying this one for the storyline, not for the exploration, because there is none for that other than just where the railroad takes you. This was the last module in the Expert series, and the initial parts of the Expert series were all about exploration. They had so many different sandbox modules, even though Isle of uh, Dread was the best one. It still gave you Quagmire and Savage Coast, even though those two were generally considered subpar, including by myself. But the Crown of Ancient Glory is a module that does overcome the railroading that was endemic with the later expert modules. It has a great plot, and it's got a thrilling end that you run the gauntlet of everything the secret big bad can actually throw at you. It's a mystery module with some action, and you just can't kill your way to the big bad. The first part of the module requires investigation. The second part is a stealth run, and don't worry if you want to stab things. The third part is will fill that up for you. So come back next week, and we're going to talk about Quest for the Heartstone, which is probably one of the worst modules ever written because it's a toy tie-in. It doesn't have anything to do with Mistara, but it is technically an expert-level module, so I'm going to include it. So until next week, long live King Strongheart.